Okay, hello everybody. Uh, welcome to our first broadcast news writing and reporting online Zoom lecture. This will be for Monday, March 23rd, 2020. Um, the first day of online classes at USD. Um, just as, as a general overview, um, I'll start every recording. We're just kind of going through the date and time and the general topic as well. Um, just so in case you might watch it either hours later after it's posted or maybe a day later, um, you're going to kind of know the setup of the day and time and overall topic. Today's topic is going to be just a general class overview of where we're going here the next couple of weeks, um, how it's going to affect your stories, things like that. So that's going to be the lecture. It's not going to be um, too long. Um, it's not going to be like a, a 40 to 15 minute lecture, um, but just kind of make sure that when lectures are posted on D2L, that you kind of go through, watch them, um, things like that, because these lectures will give as much kind of classroom material as we can over the next couple of weeks, as well as going through different types of story formats, questions, and information for completing some assignments here in the course. First things first, I want you to stay safe and healthy. Um, this is a really challenging time, you know, for US students, for us as faculty, university-wide, family-wide, friends-wide. Um, so just make sure, first and foremost, your health is what's most important. Um, so stay safe, stay healthy, um, avoid travel. You're gonna hear me say this a lot throughout this first lecture because it really pertains to some assignments in the course, but even just life in general. Um, like I said, your health is what's most important. Stay safe, stay home, be well, be healthy. We're gonna get through this. Um, it's gonna be a challenging couple weeks. Um, so just kind of know that I'm always here for you. Um, any questions you have, whether it's about the course, about assignments. I know some of you are prepping for graduation or jobs or internships. Um, I'm happy to help out any way I can. Um, I'm here to help you get through these next couple weeks um, and we're gonna be strong and we're gonna get through this all, all together. So just kind of keep that in mind that I'm always here for you. Um, any guidance, feedback, support I can ever give, don't hesitate to reach out. You're gonna see a lot of mascot photos um, in my PowerPoints. I don't have any pets. So um, as some of you know, I'm a huge fan of mascots and sports. Um, so you're gonna see a lot of mascots. Um, so of course, Charlie Cayo um, helping us out here. So we're gonna get through this. Um, stay safe, stay healthy. One thing I do wanna add, I am working remotely. Um, if for some reason you are already on campus, you're probably gonna know as campus wide, not just a large deduction in the amount of students around campus, but also faculty too. Um, USD has recommended all faculty stay home. Um, so I am working remotely. I am not on campus this week. Um, with that said, I will have virtual office hours, Monday, Wednesday, Friday from nine to 10 a.m. This hour is gonna be probably pretty much set aside for our class in general. Um, if you are taking multiple classes with me, you're going to see this first time change a bit. Um, it's going to be tailored by class to our normal class time. So I'm setting aside our normal class times as basically office hours for our particular class. So that nine to 10 a.m. probably pretty much going to be set aside strictly for broadcast news writing types of questions, things like that. 1 to 3 p.m. just has it's been um, throughout the spring semester. You know, I have my normal office hours Monday, Wednesday, 1 to 3 p.m. I'm increasing that a little bit to Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So the second time frame for office hours, I'm going to be more of an overall structure. Either time works for this class or by appointment. If you're working, um, if you're taking care of family or friends, um, if you're working on other class assignments, anytime you can meet with me, email me, let me know. I'm happy to set aside time to work with you um, for anything, whether it's class assignments, um, questions about the course. Like I said, for those of you graduating, going into internships or jobs, reviewing any materials related to that, um, I'm always here to help you out. How office hours are going to be set up. Um, for email, I would say shorter questions are best. Um, always keep in mind, my email is Kyle dot j dot miller at usd.edu. Sometimes in Outlook, it might pop up my old student email. Um, when I was an undergrad here um, at USD, 
Um, it might pop up my Iowa email because Iowa used the same Outlook as USD did. Just kind of keep in mind, you want to make sure it's kyle.j.miller at usd.edu. Um, shorter questions, like I said, about assignments or the course. If it's like a quick thing um, about that, email is probably going to be best. If it's a longer type of question or if you have multiple, multiple questions um, that you would like answers for, then I'm going to probably direct you, email me first, um, and then I'll probably direct you to either Google Hangouts, Zoom, or just calling me on the phone. Um, Google Hangouts is free. If you have a Google account, that is also free. Um, if you're on Google, it's hangouts.google.com. You may have to either download something related to Google Hangouts real quick. Um, just kind of make sure you have the software or camera set up. But this is my Google email, um, kyle.jos.miller at gmail.com. Um, a lot of Kyle Millers in the world. And so uh, my Google email is a little more detailed just so I could get a Google email. That is by appointment. Um, it could be during any of these office hour times. It could be by appointment too. Like I said, if you're working, um, if you're taking care of family and friends, if you're working on other classes and you have a set aside time that you need to meet, um, by appointment is perfectly fine. Same thing with Zoom. Um, Zoom is also by appointment. Um, again, email me, let me know. I'm happy to meet individually or in groups. Um, and so if you want to set up a one-on-one -on -one meeting, if you know Zoom, if you've used it many times before with your USD account, I'm happy to meet one-on-one. -on -one. If you're talking with some of your classmates over email or Zoom or Google Hangouts or anything, and a lot of you have questions about maybe one particular thing, or if you want me to re-clarify anything, I'm happy to set up a group meeting as well. Just, just let me know. Um, if you're talking with the class and you want me to set aside maybe a, a voluntary class meeting, um, I'm happy to do that too. Just always keep me posted. Same thing with cell phone. Um, if for some reason these don't work, or if you have a quick question, if maybe you are out in the field uh, covering something, or you're in a place with no Wi-Fi or things like that, and you have a quick question, I'm always happy to, on a case-by-case -case basis, give out my cell phone number, call me, let me know. A lot of times, maybe with, with longer types of questions, it's easier to talk about face-to-face -face or over the phone as it is over email. We can kind of go through any questions or concerns you have conversationally, as opposed to typing a, a longer email out. So just, again, keep me posted, and I'm happy to set up times with that. Like I said, I'm working remotely. Um, I'm not on campus this week. Um, and so throughout the duration, these next two weeks of online classes, plan on me not being on campus, and you shouldn't either. If you're not in Vermilion, don't drive to Vermilion. Don't make plans to come to Vermilion um, for anything class-wise, student media-wise, things like that. Stay safe, stay healthy where you're at right now. Finally, and again, you're gonna notice a pattern of me saying this, probably not every slide, but most slides, um, any questions at all, don't hesitate to ask to reach out. Simple questions, questions about assignment requirements. If you're unsure of something on one of the D2L drop boxes and you want me to clarify, um, don't hesitate. Don't ever apologize for asking questions. Don't hesitate to, to reach out and ask me any questions. That's what I'm here for as a professor, um, to help you to help you get as much learning um, uh, these next two weeks and the course in general as much as possible. So any questions whatsoever, email me, set up an appointment. Um, I'm always here for you and to help you out. Okay, again, if you're not in Vermilion, stay home. And one of the things I will probably want you to do is either email me, email the producers or all three of us, just like you would for stories, and let us know whether you're in Vermilion um, and able to help out in any way with any Coyote News productions. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. Um, if you're at home, still email us and let us know. So that way, Aaliyah and Sean, as Coyote News producers, can kind of plan out who's around, who could help, who can't help with any Coyote News things. Same thing for me with the course. Then I can help you either use Coyote News requirements for any stories that you might be assigned, um, we can kind of keep that part as normal as possible. If you're not in Vermilion and you're staying home, then I can work with you on a case-by-case -case basis 
for your news stories, for covering anything, um, because there'll be a, a few different requirements if you're working remotely that I can go through with you, as opposed to the normal Coyote News production. Social distancing is very, very, very important. Um, keep that in mind. It's, it's not just something that the CDC or the state of South Dakota or wherever you're at is taking lightly. Um, these are huge guidelines and requirements for you to follow. So six feet uh, between people in public. We're gonna talk about what that means in terms of interviews, producing stories, things like that. See another mascot. So the St. John's mascot for the Big East Tournament. Empty arena. Um, social distancing is going to be key um, because that will help stop the spread of the virus going on. It's a very serious situation. Um, so make sure you're practicing social distancing and again, if you're not in Vermilion right now, stay home, stay where you are. Specifically for this class, um, and you're going to probably hear the terms asynchronous and synchronous um, a bit from your professors. It's two terms that um, I know us as faculty have been discussing um, that we've been using in our class preps. Our lectures are going to be asynchronous. And what that means is we're not going to have anything at a specific time. Um, so my plan is not to set up any meetings for any particular times. That will not be required. Um, the lectures will be posted and watch at your earliest convenience. I know I mentioned um, a few minutes ago about you know, if you watch it hours or a day later, try to watch it as soon as you can when it's posted. I will try to post lectures by 8 a.m. of the class that it's scheduled for. Um, and that schedule I emailed out to you um, a couple days ago, as well as I will post it on D2L2 under course information. So just make sure that we're not gonna have lectures at a specific time. With that said though, you will want to watch them as early as possible because this will give you information not just for the course, any updates, any spoken updates from me. So besides the email you might get from me about the course, um, lectures will in speaking form talk about some of those requirements, any changes, any updates, um, any class concepts too. Um, and we'll talk about that here in a couple seconds um, for broadcast news ready. Keep in mind we're gonna have a condensed course schedule. Um, these next couple weeks are going to be very fluid and could be ever changing depending on state of South Dakota guidelines, Board of Regents guidelines, federal guidelines. Um, check your email and D2L often. I'll try not to post email upon email upon email um, every few hours, but check often. Um, sync up your D2L to your email. So that way if I do need to send out updates for any courses or assignments, you can follow those and you'll be able to get that information. What it means for this class in terms of points is that we're not gonna have all in-class assignments or reading or news quizzes. We'll have some. Um, so just keep that in mind these next couple of weeks is we will still have assignments. Um, due dates will probably change, deadlines will probably change. So again, watch your email D2L often for that. But we're not going to have everything listed in the syllabus. With that said, right now, you still need to complete all required video stories. That's gonna be the bulk of the points in the course. So remember, you have your VO, VOSAT, two packages, and a YOLT report. As of right now, those are still required. Um, and we're gonna talk about the differences in submitting those, completing those assignments for at least these next couple of weeks in an online format with that. There will be rolling deadlines. Um, and so the deadlines of Sunday at 9 p.m., um, first and second edits, maybe that Monday, Tuesday, is really going to depend on when Coyote News TV is producing material for their daily updates or possibly shortened newscasts. So if you are in Vermilion and you do want to help out with Coyote News, um, keep in mind those rolling deadlines. Aliyah and Sean will keep you posted. I'll try to keep you posted too. But just know those deadlines can change. If you're working from home, same thing. There's going to be rolling deadlines for stories. Um, I will work with you as much as I can uh, to set up deadlines that work best for you if you're working remotely. Um, as a general rule, any changes I do make in the course will be for your benefit, um, individually for your benefit, class-wide. So just keep that in mind that deadlines can change. 
Um, this is an ongoing changing situation. And so a lot of this is going to be kind of rolling with, on a day-by-day -day basis, um, what local, state, federal guidelines um, we do have to follow. So just kind of keep that in mind, but know that I will always help you out. I will always work with you um, for completing assignments. So again, right now, not all in-class assignments are reading or news quizzes, but you will still have to complete throughout the duration of the semester, your required video stories. Okay, so let's go over your video stories because I had some questions about um, if you're working remotely, do the times change, things like that. So your video stories, like we said, your VO will still be that 40 seconds maximum. Uh, we're gonna keep everything as consistent as we can from the guidelines we posted earlier in the semester, from what we've already followed. I don't wanna make any abrupt, large changes um, to the story formats or requirements. So just kind of keep in mind, whether you're working remotely or for Coyote News, if you are in Vermilion, uh, your VO should be about 40 seconds maximum. Same time frame we've worked with um, throughout the semester. If you are working remotely, and this will be a change, um, you are going to have to provide the VO. So for Coyote News, um, you just submitted B-roll and a script and the anchors have done the VO. If you're working remotely, you'll provide your voiceover just like you would in a package or your report. Essentially what that means is basically whatever you would have written for an anchor, you just do the voiceover for. So it's a minor change, but it is important to remember if you're working from home. So basically you'll have a, a published piece with your voiceover and B-roll. That's what that step is going to be for the voiceover. Same thing with the VOSAT. Um, same time requirement, 45 seconds maximum. That's not going to change. We're gonna keep it as consistent as possible uh, from the beginning of the semester. One change though, um, is going to be in interviews. So because this virus is spread with a lot of social contact, and that's why we've talked about social distancing. That's why we've talked about keeping space in between people, staying home, working from home, working remotely. Um, I haven't really, I've stayed at home these last few days. Um, I haven't gone out anywhere. Um, so keep that in mind for interviews, email or phone. Now from a USD perspective, USD is requesting email interviews. So if you are doing stories that you are contacting USD people, one, you're going to want to CC Haley Warren. So talk with Aliyah and Sean. Um, they as producers and as news leaders were sent guidelines from USD about how to schedule interviews with USD personnel. Right now, USD is wanting things via email. And so CC Haley Warren in your emails. Talk with Ali and Sean about those requirements. I'm happy to talk with you as well. Um, if you're on a case-by-case -case basis where you're going to be talking with people at USD. For any types of sound bites, you're going to want to do them over the phone. Um, and so you're going to notice in D2L with story requirements. I've kept the original language in there as much as I can, the original requirements, but I've also added in red font updates to where you need to focus on this for your emails. If remotely you can provide the VO, the voiceover, just like you would in a package or your report, same type of setup. Basically, instead of the anchor speaking, leading into a soundbite or leading into a story, you're going to be doing that VO yourself. Again, main thing with interviews, email, or for sound bites via phone. And we'll talk about that here um, in a couple of minutes. For your packages, same thing with the time requirements. Now, for some reason, it turns out to be like a minute 20, minute 25. If the producers are fine with it, if you're working for Coyote News, if you're trying to stretch out a story and you're thinking, you know what, if I go a minute 30, there's gonna be a ton of longer B-roll and it is maybe a minute 20, minute 25, I will work with you for that. But try to stick to a minute 30 as much as you possibly can for a maximum. It essentially means don't have like a two minute package or three minute package. Try to condense things down. That'll be easier for you from an editing side and from a B-roll side too. Same thing with your both sides. Interviews, email, especially if it's at USD, setting up emails, things like that or via phone if you need to get sound bites. 
one thing if you're working remotely, um, and this is a question I, I had over the weekend here, is what about stand-ups? If you're working remotely, I'm not going to require a stand-up because I know it could be difficult with cell phone video. Um, my main concern is that you just get B-roll, you get information to craft a story. That's, that's what I'm looking for um, as the professor of the course, grading your material. So if you're working remotely, no stand-up required. If you're doing anything for Coyote News, try to do a stand-up if you can. Um, work with Aaliyah and Sean about guidelines that they're looking for. Um, but again, if you're working remotely, if you're working from home, I'm not going to require a stand-up for those types of assignments. Same thing with the Yolt Report. Um, I had a couple of questions about differences between the Yolt Report and the package. They are essentially the same thing. Same story setup, same guidelines, same time length, um, same amount of interviews. Um, the point differences are just a little bit less, but Yolt Reports are essentially anything that can be assigned by the producer um, related to campus stories. Again, if you're working remotely, you know, stand up, make sure you're doing either phone interviews for sound bites. If you're interviewing USD personnel, again, talk with Aaliyah and Sean um, about the guidelines that USD has given us um, for how to contact people on campus um, and what to follow when you're trying to set up those interviews. Okay, so just as an overview for this week's schedule, this will also be posted on D2L, um, that PDF I sent out for the schedule for the next couple of weeks, I will upload that. Um, to D2L as well. It'll be under content and course information um, with all the other things with this, like the syllabus and, and editing and Premiere and all the guides I had posted um, kind of the first week of the semester, I will upload this schedule too. So today, like I said, this lecture will be revised information for stories, an overview of where we're going next. Um, I will upload to D2L a sports coverage guide. Essentially, um, even though this is a broadcast news writing course, you might not go into any type of sports broadcasting or sports reporting, but times where sports transcends into news. Or if you are maybe a sports reporter for Coyote News or a sports anchor, or you do work for a job or internship and they say, hey, go out and cover this type of story for a basketball game or baseball game. Just kind of some tips to keep in mind um, from the sports side of broadcast news. So that'll be today, Monday. Um, I will upload that to D2L as well. Wednesday, there won't be any lecture. Um, and what that means is I'm not going to upload anything to D2L for a Zoom lecture, anything like that. Um, there won't be lectures every single day. Some lectures kind of maybe every couple of days um, or so. You'll notice that here for Friday in a couple of seconds. Um, but Wednesday, there's no lecture. What I want you to do is just kind of work on your stories as much as you can. Um, any questions about the course? Um, you know, take care of yourselves, take care of family, take care of friends. Um, Wednesday will just be kind of basically a virtual office hour day. I'm here for you if you need it um, from 9 to 10 a.m. and then 1 to 3 p.m. or by appointment as well. For Friday, what I'll do is if you have the book, read chapter 14. We're going to talk about how to promote your stories on social media, whether working remotely or with Coyote News. One of the things I think you'll probably notice um, in broadcast news coverage, if you've watched CNN or MSNBC or any of the late night talk shows, Colbert, Fallon, things like that, you notice drastic changes in how they produce things. Um, I know Brian Williams' show on, on MSNBC, um, Rachel Maddow's show, they've worked with a largely reduced skeleton crew, almost to the point where it's an anchor in the studio and everybody else is working from home. And so one of the things that broadcast news has really had to do is promote, promote, promote on social media. So we're gonna talk about that Friday, how to promote your stories on social media, what are different types of content, examples from the industry. Um, I know a lot of you follow Lauren, um, who is up at Kelloland right now. Um, she does an excellent job promoting her stories about using different Twitter handles, um, promoting when stories will air and then links when they have aired. So that's what we'll talk about Friday during our Zoom lecture that will be recorded. Um, like I said, I will post all lectures by 8 a.m. of the day that they're outlined for. So this will be uploaded by 8 a.m. Friday, this lecture. And then finally, virtual office hours, 9 to 10 a.m., 1 to 3 p.m. That's going to be every Monday, Wednesday, Friday here these next two weeks. Again, and this is very important, a reminder to let Aliyah, Sean, and I know if you are in Vermilion, if you're not in Vermilion. 
Um, again, stay home, work remotely as much as you can. The reason you do let Aaliyah, Sean, and I know is because it's a domino effect for how Coyote News is produced and how I can help you in the course. If we don't know where you're at or if we don't know if you're able to help out or if you're working remotely, you know, we can't really help out in terms of questions or how to help you with course requirements. So it's very, very important that you let Aliyah, Sean, and I know if you're able to help out or if you're working remotely. So just kind of a last reminder for that. Okay, so your video stories, if you're in Vermilion and you're helping out with Coyote News, this will largely stay the same. There's gonna be a couple different changes, um, but it's going to be very consistent to what you've already done here in the past. You're still going to get story assignments and deadlines from Aliyah and Sean. Um, they will probably, at least I will probably try to work with you in terms of covering stories to where you can complete if you haven't covered a certain format before. So if you need a VO or need a package, I will try to work with you. I will let Aliyah and Sean know to try to work with you for those types of story formats. But just know that if you are in Vermilion, if you say, hey, yep, I can help out with Coyote News, that will largely stay the same. You're still gonna get specific assignments and deadlines from Aliyah and or Sean. So again, keep track of your email, watch out for those updates. Main thing right now for Coyote News, and again, this can always change, uh, but right now, just in terms of discussions we've had so far, there's not gonna be the standard 30 minute Coyote News TV newscast. Instead, um, our focus is going to be mainly on daily updates as well as short types of newscasts, um, maybe around 10 minutes or so, kind of a, an expedited, real quick newscast um, for Coyote News TV. Your final edits, and this is gonna be very important. Um, if you're in Vermilion, if you're helping out one, anytime you use equipment, uh, if it's in the studio, if it's in one of the edit bays, if it's checking out equipment, you're going to have to let Don know you're going to have to let the faculty know when you are checking out, when you are working on things. Um, the reason is that we have to disinfect equipment. We have to disinfect edit bays after every single use. That's how serious the situation has gotten um, to where we need to know who's in there at what times so we can go through and clean things as we need to. For your final news edits, for the broadcast, um, and again, Aliyah and Sean will give you any updates in terms of if this changes or not, but for right now, you'll still submit to the Evo Drive if you're working for Coyote News for the broadcast. The main change is for class, because I'm working remotely, um, I do not have access to the Evo Drives uh, to grade anything. Um, I want to give you feedback within these two weeks that we're going to be having online classes. And so for your final edits for class credit, you're going to want to submit to some sort of a Google Drive that you can share with me or D2L for class. Now, D2L might have some space limitations. So if for some reason your video file says it's too large, doesn't upload, things like that, then just create a shared Google Drive. Like I said, Google accounts are free. I know uh, many students have used their USD accounts too um, for types of Google Drive. So just kind of keep that in mind. Since I'm working remotely, this is how I'll get access to your video stories. Your script will be emailed to Aaliyah, Sean, and me as a Word document, um, not a PDF, as a Word document. And the reason why is that I go through and I highlight and track changes in Word, different types of feedback, um, different areas that, hey, you did really well on this. Hey, work on this for the future. And so that's why you need to email it to us as a Word doc. You can submit to me on D2L if you, if you would like. If for some reason you forget and you're on D2L, that's perfectly fine too. I know some of you have submitted scripts to Evo drives. Since I don't have access to that for class credit, email is best. And then finally, keep this in mind. Your website posts by 11.59 p.m. Friday. Like I talked in class a couple weeks ago, I will give you one reprieve. If you forget once for a website post, I will let you know. I will work with you. However, future website posts, you want to make sure that you are posting things. Because if I can't find it or if it's not up on D2L, those will be point deductions. Um, and I don't want you to lose three, five, 10 points um, from an assignment before I even grade your story because you forget a website post. Same thing with the script. I want you to lose 10, 20, 25 points because you forgot to upload a script. Um, those are things that are point deductions before I even get to your final story. So again, 
keep these in mind. Um, I will upload all these slides to D2L. Any questions related to this, let me know. Um, contact me if you're confused about anything, if you want clarification on anything, and I'm always here to help you out. Okay, so your video stories, if you're working remotely, um, if you're at home and you're not in Vermilion, um, like I said, if you're still at home, stay there. Um, don't make any special trips to Vermilion or USD. I will work with you um, for completing any assignments you need to for this class here these next couple of weeks. So in the next couple of weeks, email me some story ideas. Um, think about wherever you're at in your hometown or wherever you're based. Um, if you're in Sioux Falls, Sioux City, Yankton, um, Haywarden, if you're in uh, Brookings or wherever you're at, kind of think about some story ideas you might be able to do um, within reason, within feasibility. Um, don't go out and cover events if it's going to be a lot of people. Um, avoid social contact as much as you possibly, possibly, possibly can. Those social distancing requirements, you're going to want to follow those. But let's talk about some story ideas. Um, I'm happy to meet over Zoom, over Google, email back and forth. Um, if you want to kind of either pitch ideas or kind of say, hey, I'm thinking about this, I can work with you for that. If you're working remotely or from home, um, the Adobe Creative Suite, they are giving free access for a free trial until May 30th. Um, the Adobe Creative Suite allows for a premiere, audition, things like that. Um, and so you should be able to get free access. I upload directions um, via email. I can upload those, try to upload those again to D2L um, in terms of just copying and pasting what I emailed out, putting in a Word doc and uploading it to D2L about how to get the Creative Suite. Do keep in mind, um, while Adobe is offering free access, um, us as broadcast faculty on a, a lot of my lift serves, um, we've talked about the fact that computer speed, storage space can impact this. So if you have an older computer, if for some reason you download Adobe and it's either freezing up with, with the spinning wheel all the time, or it's working really slowly or glitchy, Keep that in mind, that computer speed storage space can impact how well Adobe is used. In that case, let me know, let the producers know. I'm willing to allow you to use iMovie, um, free editing software, not Windows Movie Maker. Um, and the reason why is with Windows Movie Maker, when I taught at Northwest, students use that as a backup. And there's a lot of issues in terms of they could download a file, but it would not play on, we use Canvas, which is like D2L, or via email, uh, the files wouldn't work. So avoid Windows Movie Maker if you can. Try to stick to either iMovie, free editing, um, things like that. Audacity is a good free tutorial, free software for audio editing, um, video editing. Um, try iMovie, try free editing software besides Windows Movie Maker. Keep us posted, um, and you can use those if for some reason the Creative Suite is not working for you. If you are working remotely, um, you can use cell phone video. Many people in the industry use this um, as a last resort. I had a student who was out covering basketball highlights a couple of years ago, and he got to the gym, camera had low battery, he didn't realize that, he just used his cell phone, and quite honestly, it was tough to tell the difference. Um, he did very, very well in getting different footage, having frame steady footage. So you can use cell phone video if you can. Same video requirements still apply, um, if it's minor, minor movement, I will take that into account and I will work with you. If it's constant, constant zoom in, zoom out movement, that's going to be the same point deductions as it was um, in normal video stories. But yes, you can use your cell phone um, if you need to. Again, email phone interviews. Have a graphic. Um, you know, talk to them about getting permission to use a photo of them. Um, have a CG lower third. Have a full screen graphic who it is you talk to. Um, Adobe Premiere has those in terms of if you're not on campus and you're working remotely um, and you can't get the Coyote News graphics, Premiere, um, Final Cut, all have different types of titles and graphics you can work with. Keep them as basic as possible. I know on Final Cut they had like different clouds and different off-the-wall colors. Keep the, the graphics in, in lower thirds basic so we can read them, uh, but those are options if you are working remotely for interviews. The main thing I wanted to talk to you about if you're working remotely is to upload your video file directly to YouTube. I would say your final edit 
directly to YouTube. How I've taught this in the class when I just had individual submissions for stories, not part of any newscast, is I had them take their video file, upload it to YouTube, and embed it in a website post. Um, you're taking out all Evo drives, all clips for broadcasts, and anything for Coyote News, and you're basically just cutting to that last step for uploading directly to YouTube and embedding in your website post. Um, and I can help you out with that if you have questions. Again, only upload to your website post. That's how I'll grade it if you're working remotely. Put your script and website post link either in an email or on D2L. Again, if you're working remotely and you have questions about this, I'm happy to work with you as you go about the process, as you work on exporting your materials. Okay, so like I said a few minutes ago, upcoming this week, Wednesday we'll have virtual office hours from 9 to 10 a.m., 1 to 3 p.m. Um, story class discussion, how's it going? Um, any questions, any issues via email, Zoom, Google, et cetera. Um, I'll be here, I'll be um, you know, holding office hours like I normally do. Um, they'll just be virtually, they'll just be online and I'm happy to help out however I can. Friday, read chapter 14 of the textbook. If you don't have a textbook, uh, if you left it at home, um, I will put up a guide on D2L. So if you have the textbook, great, read it. Um, if you don't have the book, um, I do have a copy here at home and I will help summarize and put up a guide for you on D2L. I'll also post a Zoom lecture, um, probably by 8 a.m. Friday, of social media promotion of stories. That'll be our kind of our next lesson that we'll talk about here. It's gonna be very important. Um, especially as not just with Coyote News or with our student media here at USD, um, but college newsrooms, college media across the country, moving more online, social media only. Um, you know, if they can't get into any of their studios, that's going to be very important to have a discussion, have a lecture about, and eventually kind of get some practice about um, here these next couple of weeks. So that'll be upcoming here this week. As a final reminder, um, any questions, I'm here for you. I'm here to walk you through this process. Um, I know it's a very challenging time, uh, not just course-wise with, with all of our courses going online, um, but take care of yourselves. Um, take care of your family, your friends. Um, don't hesitate to reach out uh, because I'm always here for you. Uh, I'm here to help you succeed, not just in this course, not just with your assignments, um, but any questions you have about if you're graduating soon, um, jobs, internships, I'm here for you. Um, and, and don't ever hesitate to email me, set up appointment times. Um, I'm happy to talk about anything uh, you have questions about uh, moving forward. So that concludes uh, today's lecture for Monday, March 23rd. Um, have a great day, have a good week, stay healthy, be well, stay safe. Um, if you're home, stay home. And uh, we will have our next lecture posted uh, Friday, March 27th by 8 a.m. And what I'll do is I will probably send out email links, uh, not just for this lecture, um, but for Friday's lecture as well. So again, have a good day um, and have a good week. And we will talk to you soon.